Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder series. We're glad you're here. Welcome everybody to the Skill Builder. Today we're going to have Diego. Well, thanks Stephanie for the introduction. As she said, hi all, my name is Diego and I'm an associate customer data engineer for STS. And pretty much what we do is help customers with feature activation and best practices within the Databricks platform. And we thought it would be a great idea to get started with a mini series going through UC kind of like the whole process from getting started to getting fully um, migrated and enabled in Unity Catalog itself. And we thought about this doing going through a case study. Um, so pretty much what we will be going through is Acme Corp, a mid-sized retail company, decided to adopt the Databricks platform to handle its expanding data analytics needs uh, with data scattered across various environments and a growing concern over governance and security. Acme Corp needed a robust solution to manage its data assets effectively. Um, this case study explores how Acme Corp implemented Unity Catalog and Databricks to address these challenges and streamline their data governance process. So before we get into the actual case study, why choose Unity Catalog? Unity Catalog is a unified governance layer for all data and AI assets within the Databricks platform and also outside of it through our open source version. And it provides all these benefits that you see at the right side of the screen, such as centralized governance and access control, centralized data search and discovery, data access auditing, data lineage, and also delta sharing. And we will be covering all these aspects one by one. So let's begin with the basics of UC by covering the Metastore. Um, as you can see, the Metastore is a top level container for metadata and each UC Metastore exposes a three level namespace that organizes your data. Some restrictions and limitations within UC to kind of understand the paradigm that it works through. Um, Unity Catalog allows for a single Metastore per cloud region. Um, it can be assigned to multiple workspaces, but a workspace can only use one and it requires a storage account within that same region. Super important things to have a note of is that Unity, uh, the Metastore itself can be created only by a Databricks account administrator. So you'll need to make sure that you have the right permissioning. And also to kind of understand where the Metastore fits in the picture, it's super important to see the Metastore as a logical layer that organizes and manages your metadata and governance policies without storing your data itself. The physical data remains in the underlying storage systems, such as ADLS Gen 2, Amazon S3, or if you're using Google, Google Cloud Storage. So this diagram kind of paints that picture, and it's super important to understand the Metastore by itself won't be storing your data. This is something that you will control and that, that can be controlled, as we will see in a couple of slides, at either level of the three-level namespace. So kind of to understand the why transitioning to Unity Catalog and the benefits that this brings, we have to understand where we're coming from. So Hive Metastore, our previous governance system, had two major limitations. It was a workspace level construct, meaning that each Databricks workspace had a Hive Metastore assigned to it. So if, for example, you had 100 workspaces, then you would have 100 Hive Metastores assigned to that. And within that, you would manage your metadata and also permissioning at the workspace level. And then secondly, it was traditionally limited to a two level namespace, which would be the database and the table, as you can see right here. So first of all, Unity Catalog transitions from the workspace level construct to an account level construct. So it allows you to share a single Metastore across multiple workspaces, enabling centralized governance and data management. And with that includes not only the data, but also the permissions associated with that. Um, and then on the second point, Unity Catalog enhances data governance by allowing a finer segregation of data assets through the introduction of catalogs. So as you can see here, you can have one to many catalogs as you wish, one to many schemas, and under that as many tables, external tables, managed tables, and other um, objects that you can ha have and control permissioning within UC itself. So more levels means more precise permissions, improving security and governance, also allowing for a better organization and management of your data across diverse environments and use cases. And it's super important that in the case that you're coming from Hive Metastore, Unity Catalog can coexist with your existing Hive Metastores, ensuring your workloads and security during the transition. So for example, this does not have to be a one-off lift and shift transition, and you can iteratively transition into Unity Catalog. Let's say, hey, we want to migrate a certain set of tables, or maybe we just want to have our new workloads engaged within UC and keep everything else within Hive. That's something that you can do, and it will work perfectly. And as we have mentioned initially uh, in, in the previous two slides, how the storage hierarchy works within Unity Catalog, um, you can achieve pretty much physical isolation under a single Metastore and do this on a per workspace environment. Um, 
So on a per workspace basis, sorry. So storage can be isolated at either level of the three level namespace. As you can see here, whenever you create a meta store, you have the option to define a default managed container or bucket where all your information will be stored by default. And generally, as a best practice, we don't recommend you defining this and just sticking to creating storage credentials and external locations within the platform itself, and then having that control of where your data is actually going to, instead of having a single default location where all your data would go to. Storage is inherited downward, so unless it is overridden, the storage location of the parent object is used. So in this case, for example, if you were to define um, a location at the catalog level and you don't override this location at the schema, then the same location would be used. However, this could be overridden both at the schema or table level if you would want to. Um, and it's strongly recommended, as we mentioned, to avoid the default location, which will be addressed in later topics. So now we'll move on to creating the meta store within ADB and attaching it to a workspace. So first of all, as we had mentioned initially, we will require you to be an account level administrator within the Databricks platform in order to be able to create and attach a meta store to one of your workspaces. Um, so have that in mind whenever going through this process. Um, and first of all, we would need to go ahead and go to the catalog layer within the account level and click on the create meta store button. This is pretty much a straightforward process, cloud agnostic, and it will be the same experience within all three clouds that we manage. So the only two things that we will require to define will be the name. So in this case, actual for meta store, and then the region where data where our workloads will be stored at. Remember that this has to be the same region that your workspaces are located on. So to kind of explain what goes on here, if all of your workspaces are located in East US, then you would have a single meta store that would be stored within East US as well. However, if you have a workspace within East US and then another separate one within East US too, then you would have to create two meta stores for each region. One meta store for each region. So in this case, go ahead, define the name only and define the region. As we had mentioned, as a best practice, we recommend you to skip defining the default location, which would be this AD last gen to path, as that way you have precise control of where your data will be physically stored. So with that said, we'll go ahead and go and create this uh, meta store. And then we'll just assign it to our, one of our workspaces that we'll be using for this. And as you can see, we're already enabled within Unity Catalog. And if we were to travel to that workspace, do it real quickly. And now if we were to travel to that workspace and go to the catalog section, now we can see that we are UC enabled here. So in this case, if we were to click here, we can see that we already see the Acme Corp Meta Store attached to our workspace. And now importantly, all of our data was within Hive. Um, and now we're transitioning into UC. Um, and as we mentioned initially, the Meta Store by itself won't be storing our data. So where our data will be stored, and that's something that we'll address in the next episode by covering storage credentials and external locations. So thank you very much for your attention, and we'll see you in the next video.